Okay, I'm back in with another diverse world geoguesser. Have a little look around. Going to pick out something just to model for a few minutes. Maybe like, you know, take 30 minutes to have a look at modeling something, see how fun it is. Um, right now we're in the middle of nowhere. So this is going to be a pretty much a throwaway guess. Um, but as usual, when I see this sort of color of dirt and stuff, it can always be around here, kind of around the equator, or around Australia, although Australia has quite red dirt, so potentially I want to go sort of up here, somewhere random. Right, yep, yeah, so, I don't know. And now we've got something a little bit more interesting, that is Chinese writing. Um, and there's some very Chinese buildings here. If I had tons of time, it would be cool to make something a little bit more interesting than a random item. Um, but the idea of this little challenge is to pick something out that's interesting to model. Because simulating the cloth on the last one was really interesting. I might try it again with things like that. Like you know, picking out these cloth items are actually seeming really interesting to me at the minute, so that might be something that I just roll with, um, and simulating something like that would just be quite fun. You know, creating the shape, putting a few of the bars behind it, and then just simulating the under of it. Um, that would sound good. But I'm going to... Oh, I can go down this little road here. See what kind of details are around here. One of my older projects, I always liked air conditioning units on the side of buildings. This kind of thing that comes from, you know, you'll see crazy stuff like that in a lot of anime as well, like on all over buildings. And I mean, it is genuinely like that, but when it's stylized and it's thrown on, then that could be cool. Um, as far as materials go, like this whole area and places like this, seeing this sort of transitioning of materials and that wall of decal, well, the wall of posters or, or whatever it is, um, if I made that, like it's like, very similar to something that I made in a previous project as well. And if I made that, I would think, oh, there's nothing, like why are they all destroyed like that? But genuinely looking at it, it's kind of compact. It just looks like a perfect decal. Um, as well as this looks like a really perfect example of something that could be weight painted, uh, uh, vertex painted, sorry. Um, so it's very cool to see. Um, we know we're in China. China's very big. Um, so it's going to be one hell of a guess to try and get the right location. So I'll try and be a little bit more specific because we've got Quite a lot of items in this scene. Let's see if we can come across something, something worth modelling. Not too sure. We could stick with the cloth stuff and just model. Like this brick covered cloth thing. Let's have a look. So it's like a it's like a pile of bricks but covered in a few different variations of cloth. I mean that's interesting. That's interesting right there. Although getting like the symbols on it is gonna be a lot of work potentially. And then that again, keeping with the cloth stuff, just something random like that. Very cool. Um, I don't know what I'm looking for, but hopefully we will know when we see it, as it's interesting just to look around. Some of this wall stuff, have a look at sort of, I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of add-ons now for creating like wires and so on, that I haven't actually looked into. So creating some of that just for fun in the traditional way might be pretty cool. Am I going back down the same street now? I'm not quite sure. No, I've not been here. 
think I'm going to guess and move on because a lot of this is walls and I can't see anything that's standing out as a totally unique and an interesting scenario. I think there's a lot of substance stuff here and like stuff that I would look at, but not for modeling. So let's move on. So China, um, you know, we've got all this, but usually it's kind of around this area, I'd assume. So let's go with, is it going to be like, it's not going to be anywhere really. So it's quite flat and that kind of looks like a mountain range here. So. Let's go over here. No. Oh. Taiwan. So, so very similar writing. I don't know what if they if they have a, any unique part of the language, but definitely some Chinese. This looks very cool. Um, again, fairly basic. There's not you know standard shutters on windows um definitely less random stuff out on the street compared to china um some really good height uh variation throughout the place wherever this is um it's cool that it's built on a hill i don't know a lot of a's is that italian a lot of a's on the end of things I don't think it's French. Is it Spanish that has that? I'm not. I'm going to say Italian ish for now. And again, if it was a substance challenge, just like, I don't know, seeing some of this stuff could be cool, but right now, quite different, difficult to get around. It's very interesting. Like that's a really cool view of like a really high quality image and there's so many details and, and different variety on there that'd be so cool to make that entire scene it's the kind of thing that i feel like someone like an overwatch or something like that in a stylized way would make um a stylized scene like this and it would just look really cool um as it already does I feel like this thing that I'm making right now is going to be more GeoGuessr than modeling because I think I'm not going to come across anything too interesting, but I really like these environments. So even if I don't come across something like this is super cool to look at. Um, so I definitely don't think I'm going to delete this or anything like that. So yeah, like when, when we do find out where this is, definitely somewhere to zoom in on and just kind of have a look around. It's really cool. Do a bin but they're not they're all looking pretty generic bins can be interesting that like that grass on the roof is really cool yeah this whole area is just old and let's get a little bit more writing uh, I'm just going to go with low Italy. Let's go around here. Hi, Italy. Same country, so good enough. Okay, middle of nowhere, big hills, but not really mountainous, just kind of hills. And just trying to, when I'm looking around here at these sort of random locations, I really want to sort of learn a little bit more, at least subconsciously maybe, about the dirt type or the um, rock type, just, you know, without thinking about it too much, but being able to look at it and be like, right, these are hills with this type of rock. Um, and that, that kind of can give you an idea of where it is. I am not at that point. 
Um, so I'm probably going to get it completely wrong. Be somewhere random in France, like a big patch of green like that. Right, okay. That looks very green and not very mountainy, because you know, very far away. And now I can definitely tell this is like more tropical straight away, despite being in the middle of nowhere. Um something's going on here. Um So again, middle of nowhere. I've looked at it for like five seconds, but we're gonna have to move on. Very tropical. Let's go middle. Oh, let's go somewhere over there. Why not? Okay. Very cool. Did not know that that was so dense in foliage. And there we go. So one major miss. The rest, pretty close. And we're going to have to just play again, because we didn't find any item to model. Uh, I could look at just modelling a straight-up corrugated roof object for a bit of randomness. Like, how would I do that? I guess it's kind of... It's kind of uh, pretty standard, but it could just be something... could just be anything uh, at this point. So let's take a screenshot of that. And then we will just guess randomly, don't know, fairly tropical again, quite reddish sand. This might be Australia again. Let's go just a random greenish area over here. Uh, and it was up in Brazil. Okay, well, I didn't find it very much, so let's just go with um, this corrugated roof scenario it'd be cool just to make that as a quick thing on the end of this video um, I think we saw some really cool locations on the GeoGuessr but I didn't actually find anything that I wanted to make pretty much and it's already getting pretty late so I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial type thing on how I would go about making this um, probably more beginner um, for anyone that's watching that maybe knows how to do that sort of stuff because it is quite easy but we're gonna do it with sort of a more uh, procedural style And on my screencast keys. And really, corrugated roof, we really want to just isolate that on, on whatever axis. Isolate how long you want this thing to be. I'm going to split it in two. And then I'm going to do. Do one up, one down. I'm going to remove that for now so we don't get any difference. And pretty much just bevel them. And when I, when I say when I say quick, I mean this is going to be quick for sure. Um, but I don't even necessarily need to bevel them. I could always just add that as a modifier instead. Let's see if it's just B bevel. Um, and we're going to change it to angle just to make sure it's not really doing anything at the minute. I'm not quite sure why. Supply scale. Hmm. Yep. So I'm applying it as a modifier, and that's so that we can actually just, if we put, press shift, we can really just change the style of this if we were modeling loads of them. And then we want an array so that now we can change it to any sort of scale. And then we want a solidify, which I'm gonna, I always can't find it on here, but see the underlined letters. Um, they are your hotkey that you can use, and that for solidify, it's Y. I always lose it, and I don't, you know, I know how the alphabet works, but I always lose it. So 
Um, I just press Y instead because I've sort of that's because I've remembered at this point. So let's see if we're getting an error, which we are, because we need to um, look at our array and we need to merge them. And we've got a really specific order of modifiers here. That means we um, that we to make it look how it is. I'm also going to apply the normals here just to make sure they look good. And again, now we can just press shift and start changing this style. Um, and we can change how beveled this is, and that's really useful. And it's non-destructive in a way that we can have that solidify afterwards. And then as an extra bonus, we can add a we can add a path in here. And I'm going to delete those vertices so this is roughly the same sort of size. And then for this array, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a curve, and I've assigned that curve that I had. So now we can have this length that follows the curve um, to control how long this thing is. And I think that's really cool. And as a bonus uh, to having a curve there anyway, we could actually, right at the end of this modifier stack, add a curve modifier with probably just C, but I'm not too familiar, so let's have a little look. No, it's not got a thing on there. So we add the curve, we, we choose the curve. It's on the x-axis already. And that's gonna mean that when I select the curve, now the whole thing is completely dynamic in a way that I can, um, I could build anything by just pressing E to extrude. And that can be like a bent corrugated roof. Obviously, I mean, this this asset that I'm looking at is, um, it's all one piece by the looks of it. You know, there's probably like a, a seam there, but the seam c can be built into the texture. You know, if these are all seams of metal and it's not just one bent up sheet, then if, if, if it's in the texture that we're looking at, then we can build that in. Or we, we could um, have a look at this object and potentially you know, pick array like four of them and actually build in this physical seam um, and then array that in this exact same style. Um, and then, you know, which actually I, I might as well have a look at doing. So if we hide this curve for now and we take the curve back to a fixed count and we say that this is the average length that I would expect um, an, uh, a thing to be. We can apply that and it's not going to affect anything or actually we can just uh, duplicate it because we're going to want we're still going to want that curve this can be anywhere really so let's put it on the bit curve again hide it for now and apply this top one and now when we're modeling we are going to run into issues with um we're going to run into issues with all these modifiers that we've got so it would probably be good to separate this object. Well, I'm wondering if it's going to be possible to be fair, but let's just try and build in a physical seam at the minute and we'll see if we run into any problems later. So this is my physical seam. We can pretend that I've actually put more work into this and we can pretend that it's, I don't know, actually modeled um, in a way that's obviously like a seam. And now we're gonna to wanna to apply that, but we're gonna want it to apply at an even length compared to this object here. Um, and I don't wanna join it because we've got an issue there with still wanting this procedural 
um, way of controlling it at the minute. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if I can create a way to do that. It is still going to be on the curve, and at the moment the curve is off, but if I apply that and I apply this, then they're in line. Now I'm thinking that we're going to want to know the length of this object. So, dimensions on the X 2.2. If we turn off that curve modifier, we can see that actually that's not accurate, but 2.19, 2.2. So when I array this now, I'm going to want this to be a constant offset of uh, 2.19. So that's 2.19. And then the curve and the array can be on. And now that is arraying by that length along this curve. And when I turn this array back on, then that seam is also appearing along it as well. So that is just a little bit of fun. I had no idea that that's what I'd be making, but that is what I made. And I think right now all these, um, you know, I'm not going to spend ages making thumbnails for things. So that's probably what the thumbnail is going to be, just this crazy extruded thing. Um, maybe I'll try and add, I'll move it around a little bit, but it's completely non-destructive in a way where I'm like, I can turn on proportional editing here. Change that just to connected real quick. And I can just have some fun. And actually, isn't there any there's added benefits of like, uh, is it just uh, Alt-T or Control-T? Yeah, Control-T to control the, the twist. And Alt-S to change the scale. Not that you would need to in this example, but it's just, uh, it's just cool. So, that's all I'm going to cover then. Uh, have fun with that.